Hockey time, da, 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 hockey time. Ow. It's hockey time. <laughs> We're playing some hockey. Hockey time, hockey time. And it's lots of excitement because it's hockey time. June, it's hockey Jurassic time. June. It's hockey time. There's lots of things because it's hockey time. All right, cool. <laughs> Hockey time, hockey, hockey time, baby. Let's play some hockey. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the bar. Welcome to the bar. It's hockey time. I was dancing around, so when I opened my beer, it got a little funny. Oh, okay, fair. And now I'm into the Stanley oh. Cup finals, playoffs. It's not the finals yet. Okay, hold on. Before you have your hockey discussion. And there you go. Because it's Jurassic June, and because I love dinosaurs, I found this at the beer store. It is a Jurassic IPA from Cameron's Brewing in Oakville, Ontario. There we go. I'm going to try it. Give it a shot. My first sip on camera, so you get mm. the true reaction. There you go, Cameron's Brewing. Smell citrusy. Mm. You want to smell it? Yep. Because you can smell? I can smell the citrus now. Thank you, smell. Ooh, that's refreshing. I like it. Nice. I like it. I don't usually like orange beers. Maybe my tastes are changing, or maybe it's the grapefruit or something that's helping it. Hmm, maybe. I don't know. What do you have? I don't know. I'm going to try yours. I'm going to try yours. Okay. Oh, this is that purple Kolsch. Ooh, I like that. That is good. Like you say, the orange really comes through. But it's not too, too crazy, so there's a nice balance on that. I like that. That one's got a weird... I wouldn't even describe it as an aftertaste, because it's like mid-taste. Hmm. Okay. It's like, first initial sip, you're like, mmm, <clears throat> yummy, and then it's like... Oh, but what is that? And they're like, oh no, that's okay. It's called Purple Skull, and I'm not going to go into more details about it. <clears throat> Just called Purple Skull. All right. Leaving it simple. Purple Skull. Mm, mystery. Ma, I don't feel like taking it out and reading it. Okay. So, it's Purple Skull. I like mine better. Takes it out. I just want to see what yeah, cool stuff. Ale. I think it's good. I like it. I like, right. I like that one. Yeah, this one's good. It's nice. I'm glad I got two. Cool. Yeah, I like this one too, though. Cool. We got new beers today. Yeah, I felt like trying some new beers. Yeah, felt like we haven't craft beered in a while. Yeah, we haven't tried some new beers in a while. Today was the day we picked up some new ones, and this one is good. And then we have a bunch of other ones. Yep. Craft beers, man. I love a good craft beer, especially while watching the hockey game. <laughs> hockey game. Hockey game. We're talking hockey. Welcome to the hockey game talk. I, yeah. I, so there's four teams left. We're getting closer to the Stanley Cup finals okay. here. And we've got the New York Rangers, the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Rangers won the first game at this point in time, so they're up one game. Which is impressive. Yeah, and then we got Colorado Edmonton, and I, I believe Colorado won the first game, um, and then game two, yeah, it's coming. Uh. Colorado actually used to be one of my favorite hockey teams. Oh yeah, the Avalanche. Yeah, like I watched <clears throat> Patrick Hua's retirement conference. Hmm. Yeah, that's that was, true. That, that was, was a very big thing. sad when he retired. Yeah, he was a. Uh, Quite the legend of a hockey player. Yeah, he was a legend. His career is pretty legendary, that guy. Absolutely. Yeah. And Definitely like spanned a Forsberg good, uh, and yeah. who else was playing for Colorado? Yeah, was Forsberg I mean, and... They still have a good club. The Colorado Avalanche still have a good club. Yeah, sure. I've yeah. just kind of been like MIA. It's hard hockey. to memorize like all the players on the teams. There's so many people. And like the tra there's a lot of trades. Like... For a while, I knew more of the players and what teams and stuff, but now it's just, it seems to be, like, it's just harder to keep track of, you know. And I don't watch it as much as I used to, but mm -hmm. the, the playoffs, I'm always kind of into it as much as I can. Yeah. 
And uh, it's fun to watch, but I definitely jumped on the Edmonton bandwagon now. Let's go, Edmonton. Yeah. Woo! Oh, Woo! I'm such a bad Canadian. <laughs> I'm a bad Canadian. I've always been a bandwagoner. Yeah. If the teams that I want to win don't, don't make it, then I'm just like, well, I'm going to try a bandwagon, I guess. And then, like, I just pick one. <laughs> I just ride the bandwagon right to the end. It wasn't the year for my Red Wings this year, so I gotta, I gotta just go with, with, with out of the final four that are left, like Tampa Bay, okay, the Rangers. Tampa Bay had their you know, shining light. Let someone else have it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know, they're there though this year. Like, they're, you know, they're right there. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens in that one. But, but yeah, like Colorado's strong. All of you, I mean, these four teams are, are good, but Edmonton, like. I don't know. They're, I think they're going to have a tough time with Colorado in this series, but they, I think, you know, they could pull it off in, mm-hmm. in the long run. You know, they might be able to get through the avalanche and into the Stanley Cup final. If I had to pick right now, though, I would probably say it's going to be... I'm going to say a Colorado-Tampa Bay Stanley Cup final. All right. Yeah, Colorado, Tampa Bay. That's who I'm going to go with. I think Colorado's going to beat out Edmonton, and I think Tampa Bay is going to slide by the Rangers. Even though the Rangers took game one, I'm still feeling that Tampa Bay is going to have some sort of... They're they're that kind of team that they can just come out and just next thing you know they're on fire again. Mm-hmm. That's why, like, you can't count them out. They just got this fire aspect to them. Like, it's just... And they're only down one right now, so... I'm seeing a Colorado Tampa Bay okay. final if I had to go. But I want Edmonton to win, but I don't know. I'm not sure. So I'm feeling more Colorado Tampa Bay as far as the, the things go. And this is my picks. Who knows? Could be. It's just picks. Those are my picks. All right. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, after kind of, you know, seeing a few things, that's kind of the way I'm at it. I would like it to be Colorado, New York. Colorado, New York. That would be an interesting. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> that'd be an interesting fight. Yeah, just mm-hmm. like I said, I feel like Tampa Bay has had their moment. Mm-hmm. I feel like New York hasn't had a moment in a long time. New York's kind of ready for a moment. Yeah. I think New York is the Rangers. They're ready for a I moment. I think they're ready for a moment. This could be their year. That's why, like, they're ready. Right, they like. I think New York like is ready for a Stanley Cup. I think they you need know? a moment, and they, I, they, I think they're ready yeah. for it. So I can see that. I can totally see that. Yeah. And, I mean, the Rangers play hard, so, yeah, it's quite possible. It's quite possible. Could be New York's year. That'd be cool. The Rangers might I'd be all right with it. Yeah. It's quite possible. But it's going to be a tough go, and, and, I mean, I'm just saying, I think Colorado is going to go, and I think Tampa Bay, but... I don't know. I, that's just... It's just guesses. Just I would guesses. really like to see Colorado win, but that's just because... It's an old soft spot for yeah, me. Yeah, you're so. you still kind of got a little Colorado there in the yeah in the gap of it. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. That's all right. That's all right. That's cool. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your favorite team? I don't have one anymore. Yeah. I was New Jersey. I was gonna for, say you kind of used to cheer I, for New Jersey. Yeah, right? I was. I love New Jersey. They had a good team for a while, like yeah, with Roger, yeah. and mm-hmm. there was a couple of youngins. I forget the names now. Mm-hmm. There was a couple guys on one of their. Yeah, you were a New Jersey fan. Yeah, and they did good for a long time, but then, like mm-hmm. for some reason, when Brodeur retired, and then they just, I think they traded a couple of their upper end players for some reason. It's been a little bit of a slice for New Jersey for sure. And They've they just been, uh, at us. Yeah, it's been like a little bit suck. of a slice for that team. Yeah. It hurts my feelings. Yeah, yeah, they were they were super like doing super awesome for a while and yeah. then it just kinda But that seems to be the way it goes in, in in hockey. I mean, you know, you can have a great team and then all of a sudden you trade a couple people or some things happen and it just you don't have uh, a great team the chemistry kind of changes a little bit and Mm -hmm. sports are weird like that i mean you you talk to people that play sports and if you play sports yourself you totally understand how like you're missing some players for injury and it changes all the chemistry never much of a team player (laughs) 
Nice. Like, I think the only team sport that I played was baseball. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. the rest was just kind of, you know, shit you would do in school. Fair, fair, like fair. Like, soccer. Yeah. You weren't really I, super into the team sports. I didn't like... No, I think it's because I was picked on a lot, so... Oh, <laughs> fair. You so know, you weren't really, like, super into joining the team sports to be like, I'm no, on the team. it gave everyone a greater opportunity to beat me up more. So oh, I just, no. You know, I didn't enjoy no. it. <laughs> Mm. Yep. Yep. So you and team sports are not exactly friends. Not really. You're a soloist out there. Yeah, I prefer racket sports. I enjoy the tennis. Racket. Tennis, badminton. <clears throat> cool badminton. Yeah, squash. Okay. I ping like pong. Hitting, ping pong. I like hitting balls with rackets. You like hitting balls with rackets? An individual sport like that. A ball and a racket, and ball you're and good to go. Yeah. She's a ball and a racket girl. Yep. That's it. She's a ball and a racket girl. And you tried golf a little bit. Well, you yeah. You tried it out a bit. Yeah, like I've done mini putt. <laughs> mini putt? Everybody, uh, everybody kind of loves hacking a little I've mini putt. I've done mini putt. putt which, I think mini putt's like a secret thing that everybody likes to play. I got in trouble like, for people don't play enough. Kid. People don't play enough mini putt. But you put people out on that mini putt, and it's always a good time. Yeah. Like, people got to get out there and play more mini putt. Because that's a fun thing to do. Um, you're just putting around on a little course, and it's it's just you and the ball, and you're putting away, and it's a good time if you find a cool mini putt course. I still want to go to Niagara Falls to do the dinosaur mini putt, because mm, yep. it's disturbing that I've never done that, especially considering how often I went to Niagara Falls when I was a kid. Mm. Why haven't I played dinosaur mini putt? Dinosaur mini putt. I haven't yet tried that out either, but... I feel you gotta like make a road trip. that should be on our list of things to attempt. Dinosaur mini putt, very doable, and we could just pick a time and go try that out. So. Yeah. Does that thing yeah. ever, it must close at some point? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's open all night. No, I mean... <laughs> like, <laughs> Wop. I mean, like, you know, for the season... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I probably. I know they don't get a season. lot of snow in Niagara Falls. I don't think. Mmm. Mm. I didn't think so. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, you got the the falls right there, so you, know, you get some snow coming in, and nice, nice one. So they get a little bit, sure. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I've had three. Yeah, because I'm thinking. It might be cool to go for, like, a birthday thing mm. in October. Like, we don't have to mm. wait till my birthday because it's usually snow and cold and... Fair. Well, snow and colon? Snow and colon. It's a snow and colon. Snow and colon, yeah. We could go play some mini putt whenever. We could just pick a day and, yeah, try to go find some mini putt. Could be yeah, fun. go in October, do some, like, mm -hmm. spooky shit. Yeah, I just remembered um, a joke that I came up with. Uh-oh. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't, I like, I kind of forgot it and then I just remembered it right now. It's about the, it's about hockey. So why did the best NHL team win the Stanley Cup? Because they were the best NHL team? Because they were pucking awesome. Uh, womp. Ooh, they were pucking awesome. Womp. That, that's pretty good. Decent. Not bad, not bad. They were good Decent. with the puck, right? Decent. I don't think I had to explain that one. Pretty no, obvious. No, you shouldn't have to. Pretty obvious. If you're pucking awesome, you're going to win the Stanley Cup. And to quote you... And that's the team that I think is going to win the Stanley Cup is the the most pucking awesome team, for sure. And to quote you, for if sure. you have to explain a joke, it is not funny. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. If you have to explain a joke, meh. You know, there's just sometimes some people get things, other times maybe not. Mm. So, yeah, but if you have to explain the joke, then it's probably not funny because you're having to explain it, so it's too, it's gone. Yeah. So, yeah, it's either too complicated or it's not a funny joke. Yeah. So it's like, oh, uh, well, sorry about that one. Yep. Yeah, I, I actually just remember that one, so I had to throw it out there. I liked it. Mm. Yep. I wonder if I could come up with a joke about mini putt. Don't try and do it right now. Oh, man. Sometimes it works, though. Mm. But I don't know if I can come up with a joke with mini putt. Maybe uh, it, you know, something will come. Maybe. Yeah. I've been yeah. feeling pretty funny today. That's good. Yeah, I've been on kind of like a funny vibe. Cool. So, yeah. 
been a fun, it's a, been a funny day. I'm in a good mood. It's been a funny day. I think I've been, we slept for 12 hours. I've been having a comedic day after some good rest, and I, I've been having some good laughs today. That's so, good. yeah, it's been a been a comedic day for me, for sure. For we took sure. a walk downtown. That's, That's why always... our downtown's a comedy show. You just have to walk around. It's, a, right? it's, it's a comedic tragedy, really. Uh, yeah. It's like a Shakespeare. <laughs> if you want to see comedy, you just walk around downtown for if a while. If you're ever having a day where you feel like you suck... Just go for a walk in downtown Sudbury. <laughs> it'll lift your spirits. It, I'm not sure what it'll do, but Unless, it'll, like, it'll bring you a perspective maybe that I'm makes just an you asshole. <laughs> realize that, you know, things that happen are so random. And, and yeah, oh my God, it's just such like a different vibe. And like, you never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to see. You never know what you're going to get. It is the most random a thing. Whole lot of whack. That, yeah, it's pretty wacky. A whole lot of whack. Pretty wacky. Downtown tonight. Whack. Downtown tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Find a cute little patio and hang out. They have a lot downtown of nice little patios tonight. downtown now. Yeah, downtown. the cool thing the cool thing that the city that we live in does is in a lot of places, I guess. But they got so many outdoor patios that come out onto the street a little bit. It's cool if you want to sit on a patio, but if you're trying to navigate through there in a car, it's, you know, not ideal. Or a bus. I feel so bad for bus drivers now. Me too. Like, especially that one little street. It was so narrow already. Yeah, it was always difficult for bus drivers. Yeah, bus drivers are having a hard time with that. And now, the street is even more narrow because of patios and people parking where they shouldn't be parking. But, you know, I'm a fan of the patios myself. It kind of brings the livelihood. It's a good vibe. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's navigates a little trickier, but I mean, I'm all for getting people together on patios because I'm a patio kind of person, so mm-hmm. I, I love it. I think it creates good atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if you are if you don't have, you know, the perfect um, setup for your, you know, restaurants and buildings, they have to come out on the street a little bit, and then it has to, it is what it is, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you have to have enough room for the patios, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm all for it. I'm a big fan of it. It makes it feel nicer and cooler and more of a place that you want to be at and chill out and patios are great, so I'm all for that. Cool, me too. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Do you ever have any cool, coolest patio stories of like some patios that you were on that you remember and it was just like, this patio is really cool. That one in Cleveland was really cool, but that wasn't a patio, that was a rooftop. Oh, the Cleveland rooftop bar? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Now that's not a. This not, not a patio. It's a rooftop bar. Um, but I I do like the rooftop bars. Yeah, that had a great view. That was fun. Yeah, that Built was Built right fun. into that hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that rooftop bar was cool. Yeah. As far as like patios. Yeah, patios. I know. I'm kind of mm-hmm. like, like there's cool patios, but I don't know if I've ever been on like. A patio that just goes like, whoa, like this is a patio. You know yeah. what I mean? Like these are the patio lanterns that I want to be around. Yeah, I don't think I've I've you discovered know. the ultimate patio. The ones in our city are good when they're, when they're nice and they're set up good. Mm-hmm. There's some restaurants around here that do have really great patios. Mm-hmm. But they're not like... They're not like, whoa! Yeah. I know. I haven't found that patio that's just like, this is the coolest patio ever. Same. You know? Yeah. But I have, like, you know, I've been on some nice ones. But I agree with you. There hasn't been the, like, whoa, this is a patio moment yet. Yeah. Just kind of like, oh, this patio's nice. Mm. I like this patio. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll have to search for more. Maybe we'll find it in Niagara Falls. Although October maybe. patio. Mm. One of these days, we're going to do one of these episodes at a bar. Maybe we can do one on a patio or something. We, yeah, maybe. We figure out how to do one of these bar bar things at a bar on a patio. Yeah. We, we can set it up yeah. and um, take it to a bar or somewhere. We can test out some different patios. Yeah. We'll have some outdoor sessions. Yeah. Set it up, do a little thing, you we'll know? see. It's an idea. Could be fun. Could be fun. Yeah. <sighs> and your favorite movie... Is coming out with the new version. So you're pretty stoked about that. Yes, I am. For those of you that don't know, Jurassic World's coming out next week. <laughs> which has been long overdue. 
I feel like I've had blue balls for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I love how excited you get about the franchise of Jurassic oh Park and the dinosaurs. And I love so how exciting. amazing energy that you get around that, oh. that theatrical experience. Oh, I, it's like, it's, it's my world. Like, it's just... That's cool. That's cool. Like, I, I can't explain it. Like, it's, mm. it's beyond a favorite movie. That's cool. You know, like, it's just, it, it shaped my life, man. Those, those movies and, like, like the, the way that they kind of made dinosaurs so cool. Like, I think I was interested in dinosaurs before that movie, mm -hmm. but, like, that just, it, it brought them to life. In a mm. way that wasn't seen before. Yeah. Like, I think people that didn't grow up with that and might be too young to remember when that came out don't fully understand. You know, it's like when you talk about, like, when you hear older people talk about Star Wars and when Star Wars came out in theaters and how mind blowing that was for people. Yeah. Jurassic Park for me was like that because mm -hmm. like those dinosaurs were real like that's the, the they were real they moved mm -hmm. they breathed they blinked yeah you know like yeah, prior yeah, yeah. to that it was all just stuff you'd mm -hmm. see in books what's the most um exciting part of the the storylines for you as far as like you know what intrigues you the most about is it like what's going to happen? Is it how did they make the dinosaurs move? Is it like what's the most like exciting thing for you when you're like watching the movie and you're like, whoa, like what's the, what's the, you know, the deep connection to the, the biggest part that you have, I guess. Is it the super great acting? Mm -hmm. No, I, I wouldn't say it's the acting. Um... I've just always been kind of intrigued about this idea of a company wanting to invest in that kind of science and like bringing animals back from the dead essentially. Mm -hmm. So like, this storyline is just super huge. Yeah, like it's just mm -hmm. it's it's such a creepy thought. It's like a pretty it's, cool storyline, and it's pretty, yeah, I know what you mean. It's kind of like this, like, thing that in real life, you know, would hopefully, maybe, I don't think it'll never, it'll, it'll never, never happen. happen. It can't. So, to portray it in the movie sense is the... Not is with the, dinosaurs, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the ultimate, you know, thing, you know. Yeah. You might be able to clone sheep in real life, but, like, you know, you can't really... Bring dinosaurs. No, DNA doesn't last that long. So yeah, they don't have any. So there's arguments, like there's the I guess not theories, but hypotheses that they have found some DNA, but it's very touch and go. Like there's some scientists. That's some sort of giant ice. No, in, in dinosaur from a T Rex. Yeah. That there's a scientist that claims, I think it was a woman, don't quote me on this, but they claim that they found DNA structures okay. in T-Rex fossils. Hmm. But there's some scientists that think that that's bogus and right. that it might just be something that looks like DNA or it could be... Um, altered DNA mm. from something else that was maybe scavenging or yeah, what yeah, have yeah. you, but so. So for you, like when you're watching that, do you um, want to see it try to be as like, like factual as possible towards the dinosaurs? Or are you, or are you cool if it's like a little bit fictional um, you know, maybe in the way that a dinosaur looks or if it's yeah. blown up a little bit more like, just for movie sake. Yeah. Is that cool or do you want it to be like to me, super realistic to the bones that they found? To no, like the... see to me, I'm cool with it being uh, unrealistic sort of um, and like proportionately 
things being bigger and meaner and badder because of the story of them finding this DNA and splicing it Mm -hmm. and creating these new animals. Yeah. To me, it wouldn't make sense to have them be accurate because it's not direct DNA. That's true. It's yeah. it's manufactured. So. Yeah, like so from the perspective of the movie, this it's this isn't a documentary movie. No. It's a it's a fun movie yeah. based on the story that's inside the movie. It's yeah. not we're not basing this hundred percent on real science. It's just no. like it's the storyline of Jurassic Park and the whole thing. And like the science is there. Yeah. Like, there's small elements of it, yeah, but things are are twisted a little bit differently. And if you understand the story of the Jurassic series, then yeah. you'll hopefully kind of get that point Ooh. that these. And I think Doctor Wu says it at one point. I don't know if it's in the movies or the books, but he outright says like these are not animals, like these are not dinosaurs. These are genetically modified monsters. And it's just like, I love this idea of doing that and having it go so awry. Like, Mm. it's just, it's wild to me. Mm. And I really like, and I haven't seen the new one yet, obviously, Mm. but from previews and whatever, I really like what they've done with the dinosaurs from the early days in 93, 94 to where we are now. In that, in those initial movies, they were complete monsters. Like, they were completely reptilian. Well, not totally, but mostly reptilian and just, like... (laughs) Where, like... (laughs) Where now, because they've made it so that the dinosaurs are out in the real world, Mm -hmm. they've almost had that sort of evolution. And that's why we're seeing the dinosaurs in the newer ones, like the raptors with the feathers. And there's a really cool scene that I've never seen in anything before. And I'm excited to watch like the whole actual thing play out because it was just a snippet of the pyroraptor where it dives under the ice and swims. And that's a new concept. That's a really cool thing. Oh, neat. Yeah. I don't think Pyroraptor would have done that. But there could have been some type of raptor. It's like awesome. there were ones that lived in the snow and ice yep. that had specialized feathers like penguins. I mean, we yep. don't know. There could have been. Yeah, so not. like, I don't know. I'm just super excited about this and like, The previews make me want to cry, and like the Mm -hmm. fact that we have Dr. Grant and Dr. Sadler and Dr. Malcolm back, like that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, I agree with you. It's gonna be good. Yep. Yep. Like when I'm going on a rant here, people, I hope this is cool. Love rants. Like when Jurassic Park came out, I think I went to the theater to see it. A solid six times. Doctor Rant. Doctor Rant. Oh, ha <laughs> ha. Womp. <laughs> You're Doctor Rant. Womp. Not Doctor Grant. That's funny, but yeah, <laughs> like, and I was <laughs> technically too young to get in in that movie. Like, I think I was like ten years old. <laughs> Because that movie came out in, like, 93, 94. It had a rating on it? Yeah, I think it was PG-13 or something. <laughs> yeah. But I think you could get in if you had an adult. Whatever. I was by myself. If you're 10. Oh, yeah, I guess. Because I was a weird child. Yeah, but you lived in a place that was so boondocky that... Eh, yeah. What's a rule there? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, <laughs> the things that I did as a child, like, I mm. wouldn't recommend raising your child that way. Yeah, I mean, you were a pretty free spirit, it sounds like. Yeah. But, I mean, I think you you have less fear as an adult if you're raised more on just, you know, get over it, fall down a few times, get back up, you know. You learn how to survive. Yeah, you gotta fall down a few times in order to, you know, keep walking. Yeah, and, like, that's just the way, like, my grandfather raised me. Like, he just, you know, I was a child that he picked up and shot into a pool and said, swim, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) 
know? Like, now, for the record, he was standing beside the pool. Yes, he was. He, he was, was there. He stepped on something. Oh, it's that. Yeah, he was he standing was sta- beside the pool. He was standing beside the pool. Yeah. But Niagara Falls, when I would go up and down Clifton Hill, yeah. when I was probably 11 or 12, he was not there. He was gambling. And looking back on that, probably had a gambling addiction, but... As a child, you don't understand these things, you don't know about these things, and I think when I was a kid, it wasn't quite as prevalent as it is now, so. Fair. But mm. I loved it. It That's was awesome. That's sweet. That's super sweet. I feel like anyone who worked in one of those tourist attractions, though, was probably like, I wonder where this kid's father or mother is. Yeah. Like, mm. as someone who now works in a tourist attraction, when I see a little kid by itself, I'm like, do you have parents? Fair. <laughs> Where are they? Where did they go? They're not here. No. What do you call a sick dinosaur? A sick dinosaur? Yeah. Um, Pupasaurus. A sickosaurus. Uh-huh. But Pupasaurus is pretty good. Uh, do you remember the joke? Pupasaurus is good. Thank you. Do you remember the joke from Jurassic Park? Uh, do I remember? You have to refresh my memory. What do you call a blind dinosaur? Uh, no. Fuck. Do you think he saw us? Oh, nice. What do you call a blind dinosaur's dog? Uh, do you think he saw us, Rex? Yeah! Woo, 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 woo! Came back to me there at the end. Yeah. Do you think he saw us, Rex? <laughs> I like those ones. Those yeah, are cute they're jokes. Cute. They're cute. I love dinosaur jokes. There's a lot of them. If you if you search for dinosaur jokes, there's a bunch of sons. Yeah, I've looked for a few. They're good. They're I can't funny. say that I have. There's some funny ones. I gotta brush up on some of my dinosaur jokes, but there's some good ones. Interesting. There are. Yep. Cool. I'm so excited. Hmm. Well, that'd be good. And all your reasons for why you love the that series makes sense. And it should be good for sure. And, and I'm just stoked that they, you know, decided to make another one. And that's I, sweet. I love the um, clash between Dr. Grant and Dr. Malcolm. Yeah. Because, like, yeah. Dr. Grant, like, mm. I can, and I don't know if it's because, like, Dr. Grant was my hero when I was a child, but I, I think more like he does. Where, like, I'm very old school when it comes to a lot of paleontology. Not entirely, but a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I feel like there's a lot of story that lies within the rock. Yeah, fair. And that's something that he's very passionate about, too. Mm. Like, Mm. that character. Yeah, yeah. Where you have Malcolm, who is very, like, free-spirited, like, out-there kind of thinker. Yeah. And I love that class of those two characters. That's sweet. That's sweet. I think, um, you know, as you develop characters, and especially in movies like that, that have been going on for a while, like, you can kind of play with what what happens between them and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And how they just kind of vibe off of each other. And I think it's it's cool to just let let the characters and let the story just kind of vibe as it goes along, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, as far as... Trying to figure out exactly how things go. It's almost like there's a certain aspect of unpredictability there. You know what I mean? Chaos theory, you mean? Yeah. (laughs) We could say that that's exactly what it is. So, I mean, you have to kind of let the chaos theory play itself out in a way. Because you can't keep it too intertwined because, you know, there's the chaos theory, right? So there has to be a little bit of that involved in everything, right? Everything that happens. Mm Mm-hmm. To make it feel like it just is what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. And inserting chaos theory is difficult, you know, because you want to have more structury stuff. But at the same time, if you just let it happen, it'll just happen. So mm-hmm. I think it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I'm excited. Yeah, man. And That's of course, sure. Dr. Sattler, who I think unknowingly opened up a lot of doors for women in paleontology. Cool. Um, 
not really something that you know, I focus on too much, but mm. it's something to be aware of. And she looks good in this movie. Mm. Yeah, Sweet. I'm excited. And she seems to be kind of a boss bitch. Mm. So I'm cool for that. Mm. And then there's a bunch of other characters that I don't even know because... I'm just waiting. That's sweet. You're just kind of waiting to see what happens. Yep. There's some of it, but, like, I don't know... You're in the unknown. I don't know what the storyline of this movie is. You weren't there when the storyline was being storied, so you're just... You're just sitting there on your toes, just waiting for the story to come at you. Because you weren't in the storyline storying. So you're on your toes being like, this is gonna be awesome. That's cool. You should read the book. Oh, okay. Should read the books. Yeah. Read books? Me? You, you've done really well with, with reading. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? I've been reading a lot more books, and I have been doing a lot better with reading books. And I find that books are great. Books are great. I like books. I like all of the people who have sat down and written words into a book and have included many pictures so I can also see pictures. I like pictures. I like a good picture in a book. Thanks, Bert, by the way. Thank you. It was a good one. It was funny when you were talking, you were trying to not burp, but you kept burping. I told you, you just gotta let that shit out. <laughs> so Judy's true. like, oh, true. Oh, oh, burps. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. I don't know if the camera... I mean, not the camera. The microphone picked that up, but... Yeah, I don't know. I've never, like, read a book on, say, like, a patio in public. I'm, like, I'm not a big public reader. Like, when I'm out in public, I'm, like, not just sitting there reading a book. Like, I don't know. Some people can do that. I've tried. Like, I see people doing that, but I'm just, like... I can't focus enough on reading when there's people around or things going on. Like, I'm just not... I'm not into it. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm, if I'm sitting there trying to read and there's other people around, like, I just, I don't know if I feel distracted, especially when it comes to reading stuff. Like, I just mm-hmm. feel like I need to be more in my own vibe to read. That's just fair. just for reading. I don't know what it is with reading. It's just reading. I'd rather be on my own to read stuff than in a public place or on a patio or anywhere reading. That's fair. I find I have an easier, better time reading in my own time. Than being out in public trying to read stuff. I'm just like, eh, you know. Mm. Like, or just like sitting there reading a book in public. And I was always like that with like schooly and things too. Like, I just, eh, I don't know. Mm. Trying to absorb like energy from a book or, or stuff when there's other people around. Like, I'm just, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, maybe libraries I was okay, but me. Eh. Mm. Yeah. Libraries are different because it's kind of quieter setting and you're, and I'm supposed to read. Like, you're there to read. It's fair. You know? Like, it's a library. is a little different, I guess. There was once where I went to go to the library. Mm-hmm. And I think it was, like, before a doctor's appointment or something. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to read for a little bit. Just, like, chill out. Cool. Be quiet. You would think... The library would be the place where no one would bother you. Yeah. Especially if you're sitting there with a book. Oh no. This old guy kept trying to talk to me about his fucking newspaper. And I'm like, dude, I'm the just... The newspaper that he was reading? Yeah. So he was coming up to you trying to talk to you about his newspaper. Because there was like a section of three comfy chairs. So yeah. I was sitting in one of you the comfy chairs. You were on one of the chairs, yeah. And this dude with his newspaper <clears> came <throat> up and sat in the comfy chair beside me. <clears> and started talking to me about his newspaper. I'm like, dude, I have a book open. I'm Bro. in a library. I'm trying to read. Shut your mouth. Bro. Bro. What? Like. Like, bro. What are you doing, old man? Yeah, I know some people are kind of nosy, and, and, and especially if you're trying to catch your own vibe. It's like, I'm just trying to catch my own vibe here. You yeah. Know? Like, you don't have to bring your vibe on me right now. I don't want that vibe. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to catch my own vibe, you know? Exactly. Don't Sometimes need your vibe. I'm trying to cool, catch. I'm trying to catch but... my own vibe. Yeah. Trying to catch my own vibe. I don't need the newspaper vibe. Exactly. You're just trying to catch your own vibe and somebody's bringing their vibe over. But you're just trying to catch your own. You weren't putting out the vibe that you were looking for a vibe. No. You weren't sitting there being like, I'm looking for someone else's vibe and you're putting out that vibe, you know? Yeah. Bar setting vibe where you're yeah. like, sup? 
Yeah, no, I was Suck. like face and book. You're like face and book. I'm in my own vibe, trying to catch my own vibe, yeah. and then somebody brings their vibe over. I know, it's rude. Don't bring your vibe over to someone if you notice that they don't want your vibe. Yeah, it's like when you're wearing <sighs> headphones on the transit and people try and talk to you. Yeah, like I don't it's want like, your dude, vibe right now. Don't want your vibe. Yeah, exactly. I hear you. If you're trying to catch your own vibe and somebody's bringing their vibe on you and you're like... Rude. Yeah, keep your own vibe. Yeah. yeah I'm just trying to catch my own vibe. Exactly. I like yeah. that. Yeah. You gotta catch your own vibe. Yep. And you you can usually tell if people are catching their own vibe and just leave them be. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty good on picking up the vibes mm-hmm. in rooms and wherever. Mm-hmm. And if somebody was catching their own vibe, you just let them catch their own vibe. You don't yeah. bring your vibe I've over. I've always been good at that too. You don't bring your vibe over when somebody... But yeah. if somebody's just chilling there looking for a vibe, bring your vibe. You well, know? that's why I was always kind of good at retail. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like... As much as, like, I kind of get harped on by my bosses fairly (laughs) often because I didn't just go up and talk to everybody because I can feel that. (laughs) But, like, Mm. I would go and talk to those people that wanted my vibe or wanted another vibe. They weren't just into their own vibe. And I would always end up selling them stuff. Retail is total vibe. If you you can get good at vibe retail, then that's your thing. I was never like, I must talk to everything that walks in the door and sell them stuff. I know, I know. No. Vibe retail is weird. Yeah, and sometimes if you're in a mall and there's people like outside of a little outlet or something trying to vibe on you and you're just trying to vibe by and then it's like a clash vibe. Yeah. It's like, I don't have time for these vibes. No. Yeah, there's a lot of vibing for sure. Vibage. Yeah, retail vibe is its own thing. That's its own world. World of retail vibe. It's kind of hard. It's awkward. It's hard. It's pretty awkward. It's awkward. Everything about it's pretty awkward. Like... I didn't hate some of the retail that I did. Mm-hmm. It can get pretty dry. But, yeah. Pretty fast. Yeah. Ooh. Management makes a big difference in retail. Ooh. At least I found it did. But I think management makes a big difference everywhere. <laughs> That's true. Because, yeah. But retail vibe can be so dry. Ugh. 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 Like, you just need water bottles while you're in retail vibe or something. Yeah. You should be supplied with water bottles when you try it out. <laughs> this is going to get pretty dry. Here's some water bottles. You and you're, you're just sitting there, like, one hand on your face, just leaning over, like, oh, my God. This is how you feel about retail? Yeah. 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 Retail vibe, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Retail may be dead. I don't know. Yeah. Could be. I think retail is just dying fast. I tried to keep but it alive. Online online shopping is like Wonderful. here to go nowhere. It's 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 so much better in so many different ways. I know. And it's unfortunate because some stuff was good retail y but a lot of it is, you know especially if you just want something and you don't want to deal with anything but just I just need this thing right now. Mm-hmm. And you just scoop it. Mm-hmm. But like you can't get a fitted suit online. Oh, can you? Oh, uh, probably. You just send in your measurements. Probably. But you still have to pick it up. It's not the same. It's not the same. That can't be the same. Like ordering fitted things online can't be the same. I've no. never done it. But trying to order something fitted and you're trying to measure and then they're they're trying to make it, but they didn't measure you and the place you know. Yeah. If you want something fitted, you got to go in somewhere, I think. And I agree. Let the person that's, like, making it or whatever measure you out, right? Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of great people that are making custom suits and custom things. And mm-hmm. if you don't have your exact measurements or you're trying to do it yourself, you can mess something up. Yep. And if you're looking for a custom suit or something, go into a nice store, get them to measure you up. And, you know, that's that's ideally what it is, right? Have you ever had a custom suit? <clears throat> no. Yeah, me neither. No. I've never had a custom clothing anything. No, I've only had custom designs on clothing, but I've never had... A, I've never had a custom suit. Yeah, that'd no, be cool. I've only had some standard stuff. It must be suits. really sweet to put on clothing mm. that is measured to your Exact body. proportions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that must be an awesome feeling. Yep, not just you're a medium, you're a large. Like, what does that even mean anymore? It means absolutely does nothing. It even, you're a small. Like, like you're legit. A, you're a four times extra large. Like, Dude, what does it even my mean? My closet 
contains clothes from a medium to a double extra large. Yeah, what does it even mean anymore? Like, like the, the size charts are so, like, it doesn't even... You can be a quadruple extra large, and then it depends who's making it. So, like, the mm-hmm. s- sizing is so weird. It like, is it's weird. Like, yeah. Is it as weird for men's sizing? Still pretty weird. Yeah? Yeah. Like, a medium can be so many different things. You think, like, you think it'll be fit you in a small, or if you think it'll fit you, it'll be big. Like, there's a gap there, too. You just say medium, you know? It's like, yeah. it's hard to know, depending on where you're getting your clothes from, where you're, you know, there is supposed to be a standard-ish sizing, but, yeah, it's the same for us. Like, it's kind of... Okay. It's a little bit all over the place, depending on where you're ordering from. I think we're probably going to go strictly unisex. Like, I can see that. The future of clothing is just going to be unisex. Mm -hmm. So people will be sexless unisexly. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. We'll we'll be future people of sexless unisexity. But maybe not. Because, well, I just, I I stopped (laughs) to think. Because, like, some women's clothing has, like, bras and shit built into it. Mm-hmm. But if you're a dude that wants to dress femininely, yeah, maybe you want that padded bra thing maybe. in the clothing. Maybe. It is Pride know. Month. I'm trying to learn about... Oh, yeah, it's Pride Month. Happy Pride Month, Happy everyone. Pride Month, Happy everyone. Pride Month, yeah, for sure. I'm trying to learn about all the things because there's a lot of things in mm. the rainbow spectrum that I am unaware of as I am learning. Yeah, Pride so, Month is a learning experience. Take the time to learn about it. Yeah, if anything, that's what I'm noticing is that it's a learning experience and it's a party. Have a good time. Maybe learn something while you can. and Celebrate freedoms. Yeah, celebrate the pride of just being you. Yeah. Know, whatever that, that means. Too. Yeah. You know, I, I don't even know. It's just everybody's different. So just be proud in yourself. You know, exactly. And all your weirdness. Yeah, just go with that. Yeah, just go with that. I mean, that's the only way I see it, you know. It's the only way you can see it, really. You know, just be proud in yourself, man. You are here. You are here, man. You are here. You are here now. Boop. Maybe not here in this room, but you're here wherever you are. Well, the spirit is here. The spirit of everyone is here in Pride Month maybe, together. Maybe there's some people out there that can astro travel. Oh yeah, astro travel. Astro What's travel. that? What's astro travel? It's where your that do? It sounds weird. Essence leaves your body. <clears throat> your body stays one place, but your essence goes other places. Astro travel? I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, it's a physics thing. Astro traveling. So your body stays here, but you're somewhere else. Yeah, like your your essence or your soul or whatever you want to call you it. Astro traveled. You travel. Yeah. That's a new one. Well, I mean, you kind of saw stuff like that. You remember Insidious or Insidious or whatever it's called? Mm. That movie. With the guy, mm-hmm. and like, uh, his son Astro travels, and then he gets trapped in the dark realm or something. It was called. Oh, know, okay, yeah. And he has to like. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's astro traveling. Oh, 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 okay. What do you call an astronaut that travels? An astro traveler. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Wow. What do you call an astronaut that travels? An astro traveler. You nailed it. Boom! You got the answer right. That was the answer. So, there you go. To me, that's what it is, an astronaut that travels. Cool. Where do you think an astronaut's favorite place to go would be if they could go anywhere? Like, all the astronauts out there, if they could just be like, tomorrow I want to go, boom. Like, on the planet? No, no, no. I'm thinking, like, Holy what shit. what planet? Like, if you're... Any an a- planet? Sure, wherever. You're an astronaut. You want to go somewhere. Where are you going? Any planet. You can go between a planet. I don't know. Maybe you want to hang out somewhere. You're an astronaut. You're just floating around. Woo. I feel like a lot of astronauts would probably want to see a black hole. Oh, they'd want to go right up close to it. Yeah. And just be like, whoa, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a good answer. Thanks. Black hole. You want to see a black hole up close. 
You're an astronaut and you want to go to a black hole. Big black hole. Why not? Why not? That sounds like a good thing. Yeah, where I would probably... Where would I go if I was an astronaut? Oh, I wasn't thinking of me. Yeah, I'd me neither. Saturn. You would go to Saturn? I want to see Saturn's rings. You want to see Saturn? Oh, the rings. Yeah. You want to go there. Yeah. Okay, so you want to go see Saturn's rings if you were an astronaut. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I think astronauts in general would probably like the black hole idea. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I'd want to go see Uranus. I knew that was coming. <laughs> so typical. What's that? What's that to me? There's like so many other things. I could have picked literally anything. I could have picked anything. I had to go with that. Fucking Uranus. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not saying Uranus. I'm not doing it. I did it. You did it. Woo. I could have said anything. There's so galaxies and nebulas and Milky Ways you can go float along. Yeah, but no, you picked Uranus. I picked Uranus. You picked oh, a shithole planet. I, not that Uranus is a shithole planet. I'm sure Uranus is cool. But <laughs> it is cool. It's far away. It is far. And it's probably really cool up there. You wouldn't want to live there. It's a little cold. It's not colder than Mercury, though, is it? Well, the half of Mercury? Depends if it's in retrograde. <laughs> That's the only thing I know about Mercury is sometimes it's in retrograde. It. I think it just came out of retrograde. Actually. Oh, did it? It's out of retrograde right now? It's back so. to the modern world. It's not retro anymore. It's in modern grade. Yeah. Has it upgraded its suspension? Does it have new locks, a touchscreen? Does Mercury have a touchscreen? Well, you're asking me too many questions. Does it, can you swipe right on Mercury? Whoop, 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 Sailor whoop. Mercury? Sailor Mercury? Yeah. Sailor Venus. Why didn't they have a Sailor Uranus? They do. Do they? Do they? No. Hang on. The Sailor Neptune, Sailor Pluto. Sailor Mars, Sailor Mercury, okay. Sailor Jupiter. Yeah, those are the OGs, but then like later... There was no Sailor Uranus. <laughs> There's no Sailor Uranus! That's the gayest thing ever, Sailor Uranus. <laughs> Uranus Sailor. Hi, I'm Sailor Uranus. I'm gonna have to look that one up. I'm Sailor Uranus, I'm here for Gay Pride Month. Kate! I'm here for Gay Pride Month, I'm Sailor Uranus. FYI, Sailor You can Sailor like dress Pluto. up as Sailor Uranus, it's like a character in Gay Pride Month. I'm pretty sure there is a Uranus though. Sailor Uranus is the leader of the Gay Pride movie. Unless it's it not Pluto. out yet. Sailor Uranus oh, coming no, I'm gonna at you. I have to refresh my brain. Da, 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 da. Sailor Uranus for the Gay Pride Parade Party. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. They don't say the gay pride parade party, right? It's just pride parade it's party. Pride parade, yeah. It's not like lesbian pride party. Because or... the spectrum has now increased. Holy crap, it's getting bigger. It's a massive spectrum. I was learning about this last night. I was looking at all the different pride flags. Holy crap. Is there, it spectrum -y? There was pride is Sailor, flags. Is there. Sailor Uranus in the spectrum? Yeah! Like, there was pride flags in there that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> Like, nice. like bear pride flags. So it's pretty vast. It's wild. Okay. Well, pride's for everyone. It is. If you can't find a pride flag, then you're not a human being. You gotta find a flag for you. You gotta fly, find your flag and <clears throat> flag it. You gotta flag yourself down. Ah, hitting the lights over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting stiff. Okay. Have, have you ever jerseyed someone? A what's he? Jerseyed someone. Where you pull the jersey over the person's head. Absolutely not. Do you want to try? How do I do it? Okay, that's how we'll end this one. Okay. So I'm going to stand here, and then you got to try to pull the jersey from the, the back over my head. So you got to, like, reach, and you got to pull it, like, over my head. And I got to try to... No! Don't do it! I'm Don't gonna... jersey me! Actually, this is Don't really jersey hard. me! No! Uh, uh, did I do it? I can't see! Yeah, you did it good. Oh. You did your first jersey. Sweet, I New, did it. New Jersey Shore. That was actually harder than I thought it was. Gonna New be. Jersey Shore, baby. That looks really uncomfortable. It's pretty uncomfortable. Here. No, no, just leave it. Just oh, leave it. Oh, okay. Just leave it. There just leave go. me Jersey. You're, you're a Sith Lord now. New Jersey Shore. Oh, well, that was fun. I got Jersey. All right. We're out of here.